Hello everyone, Salt here. Welcome to the video. Today we are going to be going over the Furus and its incarnate form. Now in this weapon series, I take a weapon, I build it out, and I test that weapon on its own merits, meaning I don't mix it with any kind of external factors like Warframes doing damage, Warframe abilities, um, pets putting statuses on, the, on enemies, things like that. I just test the weapon by itself, and I let the viewer make their own intelligent conclusions about things like hey, I'm going to be using Nourish and Salt put Viral on the weapon, so maybe I can switch that Viral to something else. Things like that. So let's get into the Furious Incarnate here. So it's a one-handed, like, machine pistol. We'll do the evolutions at the end. We'll do the mods first. So we'll get into it here. The... Uh, incarnate form has heat as an innate element on it. Um, there is a reason we're going to be putting more heat on it, but just to, just to know, it does have heat just innately. Um, has pretty good status chance. We're going to do stuff to make the status chance even better, but even just starting off has pretty good status chance. And it uh, so the incarnate form it, it kind of shoots out like a beam, like a wide beam that does a lot of damage, but it does a lot of like quick damage like like ticks very very quickly and so it has the potential to produce a metric butt ton of statuses uh, i've actually used this on um, the 60 eyes uh, steel path boss he's the one that, he takes a very long time to kill so he's a he's a good one to test on and on a full incarnate bar i think i got him close to 1000 heat stacks on a full on one full incarnate bar which is pretty crazy. Most enemies you're not going to be able to do that with because they're going to die too quickly. But um, the Steel Path 60 Eyes boss is is very, very tanky. That, that fight takes a long time. Okay. Um, the other interesting thing about this weapon, and I'm actually going to go over two builds, but the other interesting thing about this weapon is, let me type in Furious, and we have a special little mod that the Fur Furious can use called Winds of Purity. It's a syndicate mod, so you have to get it from the, uh, the syndicate that sells it. It's Purity, I think that... Oh, it says right there, New Loca. Okay, so it's a New Loca mod that you buy from them. It can only be put on the Furus, and it gives you lifesteal. It gives you a pretty good amount of lifesteal, 20% lifesteal. Uh, Warframes do ridiculous damage, so, I mean, honestly, even, like, 2% lifesteal will usually just, like, fill you up for health. So a 20% lifesteal is, is crazy. Um, but you also get that little Purity effect. And the Purity effect is going to be when you have the weapon out, when you get affinity with the weapon, uh, it's about a thousand affinity if I remember correctly. Um, after about a thousand affinity, it's going to trigger a corrosive explosion. It's pretty piss poor damage. It doesn't scale very well, like in, as far as like you know going up in uh, in difficulty. But yeah, it it does a little explosive uh, corrosion corrosive explosion. It restores twenty five percent of your health, and it gives you a 25% bonus to your max health for 30 seconds. Uh, this is on your base health, though. So it, it's not going to restore or give you a gigantic bonus. It's not like if you were playing an Anaros with, uh, you know, 10,000 health that you're going to get 2,500. You're going to get you're going to get his base, which is still quite high, but, um, you know, it won't be the modded value. It'll be the base value. So um, for today, we have two different builds. We have the main build that probably almost everyone is going to use over the utility one. But I am going to have like a little utility healing build. I, if a weapon can be made to have another purpose instead of just, you know, th this weapon does big damage, end of story, then I will try to do it. And this weapon does have a way to actually have a utility purpose. Um, so that would be in the case that you had a primary or a melee that you actually were, like, doing the most of your uh, damage with. So in that case, the Furious, you could use it as a utility to heal you. But we'll go over the main build first. The utility uh, build is very similar, just with a couple mods difference. All right, so Furious main here. Um, what we're going to have is we're going to have Galvanized Diffusion for multi-shot. Galvanize crosshairs for crit chance. And the incarnate mode will trigger headshot conditionals. It doesn't seem like it would because it's like a really wide, like almost flamethrower-ish beam. 
but it does trigger headshot conditionals. It's actually very easy to trigger headshot conditionals with it. And with a full stack of crosshairs, you're going to be at not full oranges, but almost. It'll be like 80-ish percent oranges and like 20-ish percent uh, yellows. Um, without a full stack, you'll be like 50-50, basically. 50-50 oranges and yellows. Primed Pistol Gambit for crit chance. Primed Target Cracker for crit damage. Lethal Torrent for fire rate and multi-shot. Now we're going to get into our elements. And our elements are going to be, just remember, the game reads it from left to right. So it's going to read uh, Pistol Pestilence, and then it's going to read Frostbite. So that's going to be the 60-60 Toxic and the 60-60 Cold to make Viral. And then this one here is going to be Primed Heated Charge. That is going to be our heat mod. The reason we're using Prime Heated Charge, even though the weapon already has heat, is just to increase the heat weighting. So if we look at the weighting here for the Incarnate Mode, um, the heat is a little bit more than double of what the Viral is. So for anyone that doesn't know um, what happens with Status Chance, um, so this Status Chance is 114%. So what that means is that you have a 100% chance to get one status, so you'll always get one status out of this, and you have a 14% chance to get another status. So for simplicity's sake, let's just say it was 100. So there was only one instance of a status being applied. So let's just say this was a 100% status chance, and it's going to apply one status. Well, the game is going to kind of do a dice roll, and it's going to pick from the available statuses down here. Now, the only available statuses we have for the incarnate mode are, is going to be heat and viral. Because the heat is weighted like a little bit more than two times higher than the viral weighting, there's more of a chance that that dice roll picks heat. And that, that's basically how status chance works. And so that's why it's important to increase your heat weighting because there's a viral only stacks to 10. So there's, there's no point. Once viral's at 10, every, it can still choose viral is the problem. And every time it chooses viral, it's pretty much not doing anything. Yes, it's technically refreshing the 10 stacks of viral, but it's not really adding anything else. It's just going to be stuck at 10. So by adding increased um, heat, by increasing our heat weighting with prime heated charge, we get more of a chance to get heat procs instead of viral. Viral is still amazing. It's just that it only stacks to 10. So, uh, and like I said, on the 60 eyes boss, we can get our heat to 1,000 procs. So it's just important to, to make sure you have a higher heat weighting. Um, I don't think the 6060 is better. So if you go to Scorch here, so let me put Scorch on. I'm going to take this off because I don't think I can. F well, maybe I could fit it with it. Yeah, I can. Okay. Let me put Scorch on here. Let's let's look at this. So now with Scorch, oh my goodness, we have more status chance. So instead of a 14% chance to produce a second status, we now have a 45.6% chance to produce a second status. That seems nice. But look at our heat weighting. Our heat weighting is almost the same as Viral. It's a little bit higher. And so you're going to end up with a lot. Yes, you're going to technically produce a little bit more statuses, but most of those statuses are going to be wasted. Most of them are going to be those virals that are just going over on top of other virals that are already at 10. So that's why Scorch is not that great. So I think Prime Heated Charge is better. Um, the 90, so there's, there's basically three mods. There's Prime Heated Charge, Regular Heated Charge, and Scorch. The 90 is a little bit too much of an in-between like, yes, it'll increase your heat weighting, but it doesn't increase it as much as Prime Tita Charge, and it doesn't give you any status chance. So I feel like you kind of go with either the big Prime Tita Charge or you go with the 60-60. Don't, don't use the 90. The 90 is kind of the, wor the worst of both worlds. All right, I've over-explained that slot a little bit. Let's go to Lethal Momentum here. Lethal Momentum is going to be uh, projectile speed, which... Kind of like a shotgun, weirdly. This weapon has fall off. So just like a shotgun, if you increase projectile speed, you increase the fall off damage. So that's going to be important. Um, so if I scroll all the way over here and I take off lethal momentum, we see that the fall off damage, now at 10 meters out, it's going to start doing uh, way less damage. So with lethal momentum, we're able to shoot to 14 meters out with it doing um, before it starts doing less damage. Uh, and there's no way to increase the beam length of this weapon, unfortunately. There's no, um, uh, I don't believe this one can use the, yeah, it cannot use like the uh, plus eight meter one that sometimes secondaries can. So, and that's why we go with lethal momentum. The beam length is kind of stuck with where, where it's at. And then we have Cascadia Flare. 
in this slot, a lot of times we use Deadhead or Merciless. Deadhead and Merciless are a simple 360% damage increase with a few little extras. Flare is a 480% damage increase. So it's obviously better than the other two. But sometimes we don't pick Flare because Flare requires you to pump out heat procs at a somewhat reasonable rate. or Otherwise, they fall off pretty quickly. Um, but the Furious is a monster at pumping out heat procs. So Flare is absolutely perfect on this weapon. And that's why we're using Flare. That's pretty much the mod setup for here. Um, we're going to go into the evolutions, but I also want to show the utility setup as well. Just because the utility setup is going to use the exact same evolutions, there's really no reason to switch them. Um, so I just want to go over the utility real quick. So just remember all the mods here, uh, and now we're going to switch to the utility. Boop. And there's only two differences. So with the utility, we've taken off viral. So these two slots here, remember we had viral heat. Well, we have to fit Winds of Purity in. So we have to find a place to actually put Winds of Purity. And so we're going to put it here. And that gives us another slot because now we can't fit Viral anymore because, you know, we need, you need two mod slots for that. And we're going to put Hornet Strike. Hornet Strike is just going to increase our flat damage by a little bit more. So this utility build will still be ridiculously strong. It'll still technically kill enemies ridiculously quick. It's also going to heal you, though. Um... This setup is for a is for using the Furus as a utility. So you're going to have a primary or a melee that is actually your damage source. It's actually going to be producing more damage than your Furus. And you're just using your Furus. If you find yourself getting a little bit low on health, you whip it out, you shoot it, you put it back away, you take your melee or your primary back out again, and you're, you're good to go. It's just your heal, basically. It's, it kind of turns it into like a healing ability. Um, any kind, anytime there's a chance for me to turn a weapon into something other than what it's supposed to be, I, I try to do it. And so that's why I went up with the uh, utility heal. Um, of course, the more damage you do is going to translate this uh, uh, lifesteal into um, more life given. And so that's why, you know, we kept most of the damaging stuff on here. Um, we put Hornet Strike, which is more damage. We don't really care about Viral because we don't. We're not really intending, it will kill things, weirdly, but we don't really intend to kill things. We just intend to do damage so we can heal ourselves. And so we just took Viral off. That's why we switched the uh, Viral out for these two mods. So that's a little utility build. Pretty much the exact same way as building the main, except you take Viral and you put Hornet Strike and Winds of Purity on instead. Uh, so this is a fun little build for, um, for just like a healing weapon. So we'll go back to the main, though, because that's what we're doing today. That's what the uh, gameplay is going to be on, is the uh, main build. So, okay, let's go over the evolutions now. So, first evolution is nothing. It's just that you've unlocked it. Congratulations. Second evolution is, is very important, and it's also a little bit unfortunate. So, there are a lot of incarnate weapons that are really good, but they have conditionals where you kind of have to use it with a Warframe with 450 armor or above. Or you have to use it with a Warframe that produces overshields. Or you have to use it with a Warframe that does this and that. Well, the Furious is kind of like that. The Furious is an amazing weapon. It's an amazing Incarnan. But the very first evolution gives you like that, that kind of issue. Where Let's look at the first one here. Increases damage by plus 28. That's awesome. And when you have overshields, it increases your damage by another plus 30. That's amazing. Because that's not just plus 30 that is plus 30 base everything gets like all the mods you put on your weapon everything that is getting multiplied or doing weird like calculations that's all based on the base damage and so by increasing your base damage by plus 30 that's amazing that's an extremely powerful buff but like I was saying before, you have to be able to produce overshields, and you have to be able to just keep, to keep overshields up. If you just have like a piddly way of getting overshields where they keep like falling off, it's not good enough. You're not going to get the full effect of this weapon. Let's look at the other uh, side of the Furus. Here we go here. Stormburst. We have a similar story where this is another amazing thing. So you get... Plus 28 damage, just like you did with this one. You don't get the extra plus 30. You just get the plus 28. But you also get plus 120% multi-shot uh, when it's fully stacked. So fully stacked, 120 multi-shot um, as long as you're hitting enemies with electricity status. So 
there we go with that, that unfortunate thing again. There's no easy way to make this weapon have electricity. I think you could if you re basically removed heat. You would have to, like, have the heat combine into, uh, like, radiation or something and then put electricity or... No, I think radiation uses electricity, too. Yeah, electricity is radiation heat. But you'd, you'd have to combine the heat and then put electricity, and then the Furious wouldn't be producing the crazy heat procs it does. So I don't think that's the best way to be doing this. I think the best way to use Stormburst is with an external primer. So, like, um, it does kind of suck having to prime for ranged. I don't like priming for ranged. Um, like, myself. I wouldn't want to have, like, a primary that primes for my secondary. That's kind of stupid, I feel. But there's, like, uh, pets that can prime for you. The Hound is okay. Sometimes he'll shoot his little uh, Synergize Prospectus, like, weirdly, and he won't be shooting at things that you're trying to shoot. So, like, that's not perfect. You could use a Warframe that spreads electricity. That would probably be the best way. Um, but this is very strong. Stormburst, 120% multi-shot. That's amazing. And then this one here, plus 30. You know, I'm looking at the, the one on the bottom because they're both plus 28 on the top. But this one here, plus 30 uh, base damage. That's amazing, too. Uh, it's just that they force you into specific builds. So that, that's kind of the sad story with the Furious. Very powerful in Karnan, but it's going to force you into certain builds. This is going to force you to be doing electric to enemies before you hit them. And this one's going to be forcing you to use it on a Warframe with Overshields. So today I'm going to be doing the uh, overshield way just because I don't mix this with like externals. I don't want to be like using a primer that does damage or anything like that. So I'm going to be using it um, with the overshield. That's why I'm using Protea. So, okay, that was a lot for the first evolution, but that's pretty much like the most complicated one. Next evolution here. These are all not great options. So increases accuracy by plus 50. That pretty much only affects the... Uh, uh, non-incarnate. Increases mag capacity by plus 25. Pretty much only affects non-incarnate. And Executioner's Fortune. On headshot, 10% chance for an instant reload. Reload speed does affect incarnate switching, but I don't think this would with the conditional. On a headshot, chance for instant reload. I think that only affects the uh, uh, non-incarnate there. But regardless, we're going to go with Extended Volley. Plus 25 to the non-incarnate magazine is going to just basically let you stupidly spam this into a crowd of enemies and get your headshots, pretty much. You don't really have to worry about running out of ammo and having to go for a reload, just because you have enough mag size um, where you could just kind of dump it into a crowd, fill up your incarnate bar, bam, you're good to go. So that's why we're picking extended volley there. And then the very last uh, incarnate here. There are uh, some interesting picks here. Headcracker, I think, is the weakest. I don't like conditional fire rate because the weapon doesn't feel the same all the time. It's always switching around. And so that's why I don't like this one. I don't like the conditional fire rate. It also has a... The Incarnate also already has, like, a very high fire rate. So I feel like more fire rate is just going to make you waste Incarnate Bar. Like, you're going to probably be shooting more Incarnate at enemies that are already dead. Prelude of Might is very strong, but it changes the buildup uh, significantly. Because... Yes, we're using um, Galvanized Scope, or whatever the, um, the secondary's version of Galvanized Scope is. I forgot what it's called. But yes, we're using Galvanized Scope. But even without Galvanized Scope, just with the regular crit mod that we put on there, we're still above uh, that 40% uh, crit chance. And so for you to use Prelude, Prelude of Might, you basically have to like set your Furus up as a status weapon. Um, it's okay. Like this, the build set up that way is okay. I just think the the other way is better. And then this one right here is the one we are going to be using: Elemental Balance. Um, this doesn't require us to have a weird build like Prelude of Might, so we can just have a basic build, and it's going to increase our status. And this is additive, so this is not multiplicative. Sometimes um, additive is actually better. So we're just going to get twenty eight percent plopped on top of the weapon, which is amazing, and it's going to uh, just let us do a crap load more statuses. So, quicker ways to get to 10 viral stacks, quicker ways to just pump that heat at a crazy amount. Um, so, elemental balance is perfect. So, that's what we're going to be going with. So, those are our things there. Um, 
you're basically going to choose the exact same thing for both uh, uh, the utility and the, the damage furious. Um, the only one that will change, and it's going to be up to you, is the first one, the Haven Fury Foray and the Storm Burst. Um, they're both really good. 120 multi-shot is amazing. Just remember, though, that this falls off after two seconds. So you you pretty much have to ensure that you're hitting things with uh, uh, electricity status. So if you're using a Warframe that can like um, pretty consistently pump out electricity status on enemies, Storm Burst will be really, really good. 120 multi-shot, amazing. 30 uh, base damage on a weapon, amazing. Kind of up to you. You know, are you using a shield frame with uh, overshields? Haven for A is your choice. If you're not, but you're going to be putting electrical status, Storm Burst is your choice. Okay. So we're going to be doing this on a Protea with no Archon shards. Um, I'm using Protea because her one has two ways of using it. You can either tap it to do damage. I'm not going to do, do that because I don't want to be showing... Uh, I'm not mixing this with external damage sources. I don't want to do uh, grenade fan damage. But I am going to be using her one in the second way you can use it, where if you hold it down, it shoots out um, these like little overshield balls, I guess you could say. And you pick up an overshield ball, and it gives you a crap load of overshield. That's pretty much it. It does zero damage. It just gives you overshield. So that's how I'm going to be using it. And that's how I'm going to be maintaining my overshield for the Furious uh, buff there. But she has no Arc uh, Archon Shards that increase weapon damage. She has no mods on her that are going to increase weapon uh, damage. She has a pet with no Sentinel weapon and no mods on the pet that are going to be increasing weapon damage. That way we can test the uh, Furious by itself and see how it's doing. So let's get... Let me stop running my mouth and get into the... Uh, the Kuva survival here. Steel Path. Let's have Uni. We're going to do 10 minutes here. We're going to kill some trash, kill some acolytes, see how this works. So what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be... That's an energy pad right there. I'm going to be using her hold, held down one, and it's just going to throw these balls, and when I pick them up, or what I've already picked one up, it's just going to kind of rotate around me, and it's going to um, make sure I have overshield. So once in a while, you'll see me doing that, but it's just going to be the uh, the energy balls, these ones. Okay, let us start this up here. So I'm already at five stacks of scope. Basically, without even trying. That's why it's very easy to actually get uh, headshot conditionals with this. Just remember, you will have to aim in. Um, you can kind of like aim glide while you're aiming in, though. It's no, no real issue. It's not like you have to play this slowly just because you have to aim in. I'm going to try to remember to give myself <laughs> overshields because it is going to fall off once in a while because I my uh, memory is not the best there. I don't play Protea a lot, so remembering to give myself overshields might be an issue. Of course, if you're if you're a, a you know a Hildren main or a Shield Harrow main or a Shield Protea, um, I think Revenant maybe sometimes gives himself overshields. Maybe not. I, I'm not really sure on that. Then, then you'll be more consistently keeping overshields up. That plus 25 magazine evolution is basically just going to let us stupidly just spam into enemies without having to be super, like, anal about getting headshots. Just through pure dumb attrition, we will get our headshots to fill it up. This is a this is a ridiculously power powerful uh, incarnate. Something I didn't mention, and it's 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 pretty interesting to know. If you've noticed, it's actually like sometimes a little bit hard to see in front of you because of the effect of the Furious. 
if you want to basically turn that invisible so you can see everything you're like you're shooting at without like having to have that big like energy ball in front of your your weapon you turn your energy black so you would go black black with your energy i turned my energy i think it's white black or black white um, that way i could see it a little bit but it's a little bit transparent that way for the video people could like see the effect but if you wanted that to pretty much be invisible, go black black with the energy of the Furus. You, you won't even be able to to really tell that it's uh it's going that way. It'll just basically be uh invisible. Right, I'm gonna hit this one life support. Just to top ourselves back off to hundred. Give myself overshields again before I forget it. So the other reason I like the... Uh, the I'm going to call it Galvanized Scope, but I think it's called something different for the uh, secondaries. But I'm just going to call it Galvanized Scope for here on out. So <laughs> don't get don't get too angry at me in the uh, comments. But um, the other reason I like Galvanized Scope is that it makes sure that your crit damage is always affected. So without Galvanized Scope, you're in um, whites and yellows. You're in mostly yellows, but you still have a lot of whites that you're producing. And your whites aren't getting hit by that crit damage, uh, those crit damage multipliers that you're putting on your weapon. And so I feel like you're, you're missing out on a lot of uh, DPS that way. Alright, we have the uh, guy coming here somewhere. Why do these guys always like to hide? Or is that him right there? That might be him right there. That's him. All right, let's... Uh... Now, unfortunately, on Acolytes, you can't stack uh, past four. So that, that does kind of suck. But this still does a lot of tick damage. So let me get my Incarnate back up. There he is. So... He keeps, like, teleporting behind me. Come on, Axe. Let me show this off. So even though it's, you know, you can't um, stack those heat procs, it still ticks so quickly for damage that it'll kill Acolytes pretty quickly. Uh, the other thing to know is that um, I mean, the people that are interested in this probably already know it. I just get this in the comments a lot. Um, that uh, faction mods will double dip on um, heat procs. I just don't do my build with the faction mods because it would require like five different builds. One for um, corrupted, one for infested, one for veneer, corpus... Uh, murmur, and and that's just because like, if you're putting a faction mod on, but you're not actually changing your element, it's like you know putting a suit on and then forgetting to put your pants on. It, it's uh, you're you're going out of your way to do something that improves the weapon, but you're not fully doing it. So you kind of have to go full into it if you're going to do the whole faction thing. And I don't feel like doing five different builds on every single weapon because of that. And a lot of times it will significantly change up the uh, the build too, especially if the weapon has an innate element like this one. Because if you were going to go, you know, uh, faction damage, uh, negative, you know, bane of infested or whatever the secondary would be, so bane of infested, you would want to go gas. Uh, well, if you want to go gas, you have to use heat, and then you know you're mixing the uh, the innate heat with it. Uh, against corpus, you want to go toxic. 
And if you're using Toxic, it's going to try to mix with the Heat. If you're going Bane of uh, Murmur, you want to go Radiation. Which, again, is Heat. Uh, what else is there? Bane of Grenier, Corrosive. Uh, you could use Corrosive Heat. Uh, Bane of Corrupted would be either Viral or Corrosive, um, depending on your taste. I like Viral against Corrupted. But again, you're switching your build up. Um, well, actually, no, this this is Viral. <laughs> this one is uh, Viral uh, Heat. So this, this one would be an easy transition into the, into the Bane. Um, but it's one of those things where, like, if you if you want to use a faction mod, go ahead and do it. But you're, if you don't also change your status, it's it's like putting a suit on and then forgetting to put your pants on. You've gone out of your way to uh, increase your weapon by a bit, but you didn't go all the way that you could have. So I make general builds. I make um, usually viral or corrosive. Corrosive for whispers content because that's the best general element and viral for the uh, all other content because that's usually the best general element for non-whispers. There are some weapons that are a little bit of uh, outliers that I wouldn't go viral in. Maybe they're really strong in another element for some reason. I did just want to kind of say that in this video, just because I, I, for a few videos, I've gotten, you know, some people with, like, use a faction mod instead. And it's like, oh, you know, I, I understand. I understand faction mods are strong. But it would require me to make, uh, you know, five builds per weapon. I figure if, if you're interested in using faction mods, then, uh, you know, hopefully you, you don't need a build guide. We have Mania. These are a little Zephyr Acolyte. I think he has Turbulence on right now. I wonder if the uh, Karnan goes past Turbulence. I don't know. Let's see. Eh, it does, although Turbulence might have fell off of him. Oh my goodness, Salt. You forgot to put your friggin' Overguard on. Or not Overguard, uh, Overshield. And I'm getting staggered. How long have you gone, Salt, without putting your Overguard or your Overshield on? When Protea Prime comes out, I think I'm going to switch this build up. I don't really think that Shield Protea is enough shields to uh, be super viable. I like to, with my shield builds, I like to go Shield Adaptation. It's just that Protea can only get to like a smaller amount of shields than like, let's say, Shield Arrow or Hildred. So, uh... That's the unfortunate thing. Because she doesn't get double uh, overshield like uh, Arrow does. Okay, we're at 800 kills. Oh my goodness, that is well above average. That's double the average. So when I do this, uh, these testing, on average weapons, average weapons would be something like, you know, like basic assault rifles, like the Kuva Carrick, the Kuva Hind, things like that. I usually get about 400 kills in 10 minutes. And this guy got us to 800. I mean, it was technically 11 minutes in, but I, I spent a lot of that time fighting the uh, Acolyte in that last minute. Although, I was probably killing a crap load of little guys, too. Oh my goodness, I hate this part of the map. So we're going to do a 10-minute Lua Conjunction next. Enemies at Lua Conjunction are going to be a little bit higher than normal. They're going to start at 180 to 200. 
Uh, they're going to be mixed enemies. They're not just all going to be Grenier. They're going to be corrupted. And it's going to force me to fight Thraxes, which are kind of like Super Exoduses. All right, let's get into here. Try to remember to keep myself in overshield. An easier frame I could have done this with is uh, Pildren. It's just that um, I don't want to be spamming pillage and stripping armor because that would that would give like a skewed view of the weapon. So the only one I could think of that I have built out. There's probably other ones, but the ones I have built out that could give myself overshield without um, affecting gameplay was Perodia and her little uh, you know grenade thingies that she shoots out. Her shield grenades. This should be very good against Thraxes, though, because Thraxes you can stack uh, statuses past four. Most enemies you encounter um, are going to die pretty quickly to this. You know, yes, this stacks uh, uh, heat very high, but... It's never really going to get to a lot of stacks just because enemies are going to die before it, it, it actually um, gets to a super high number. The only enemy I could actually find that would take a full Incarnan bar was uh, 60 Eyes Still Path. Well, maybe the Acolyte too, but the Acolyte is not taking um, heat procs from it though. That's why. So it's not really a good tester. Yeah, I think when Protea Prime comes out, I might switch to either a health and armor Protea and just use her little uh, uh, overshield as just like a little extra buffer. Or, I mean, maybe I will keep her as a shield adaptation frame. It's just that I uh, have to check and see if there's ways for me to get her shield a little bit higher. Cause it's not very... 3,500 with overshield is not enough for, for endurance steel path. Like, it's okay for this stuff, but when you get higher in, it's, it's not enough. I have a nice little shield gate, but I can't really... Um, you can't rely all the time on your shield gate unless you're also using rolling guard. You know, your shield gate will pop randomly. Um, so it'll give you immunity, and that's nice. And then usually with rolling guard, it'll cover the other half of um, what your shield gate didn't. So, like, your shield gate will proc, last for a few seconds, especially if you have a lot of shields. Um, and then when that falls off, you can just do rolling guard, and you're, you're immune for, for a bit. Your shield goes back up, and you kind of just repeat the whole process over again. But I don't, I myself don't really like using Rolling Guard unless I'm going for, if you're going with le for a level cap, you have to. There's really no choice. Um, but anything like under level 5,000 enemies, you can still not use uh, Rolling Guard. And I don't do level cap often at all. I, last time I, I did it was a while ago. Very, you know, quite a while ago. So I don't necessarily like uh, rolling guard too much myself personally me 
Zany. I think he's the Zephyr again. I'm getting a little bit better at learning their names. I'm pretty sure Mania is the Zephyr and Misery is the Necros. I always get those two mixed up. Uh, Thraxes here in like 15 seconds. I really need to get this guy down so I can focus on Thraxes. He's got the stupid Zephyr shield up that's just eating up my bullets. Alright, Thraxes are dead. One Thrax dead. Second time my uh, operator died. That's not good. But we killed the Thraxes very quick. Um, we are still have the Acolyte up, and we have that um, debuff from our uh, operator dying, unfortunately. So I just died there. All right, let's head to the next set of life sports. Nope, there's still in this room. Hit this guy right here. That one up there. I maybe should start using Matarai for these uh, these runs for with the Thraxes. They are it is a lot better at killing Thraxes than. Uh, the random stuff I use sometimes for, like, other endurances that don't have Thraxes. When you're dealing with Thraxes, Matarai is really good. You basically just one-shot things with the Raplak. Um, without Matarai, though, you're, as you see, it's not a one-shot. It's like a, you know, two, three, four-shot sometimes. And then the operator ends up dying. You get the little beat debuff. Can't remember exactly what the debuff does. I think it either makes your operator or your Warframe a bit weaker in some way. Or maybe it's both of them. I don't know. I, I haven't really paid attention too much. I know it's some kind of a debuff. You don't basically just let to get your... You don't get to have your operator die for free. They, they punish you in some way. If you know for sure what it is, let me know in the comments. Because uh, pro I'll probably be too lazy to look at, look at the wiki for it. <laughs> It's some kind of a debuff. But as, if you've noticed, it's very easy to keep up the five stacks of uh, Galvanized Scope. Just because, um, you know, the Incarnamo can easily get headshots. Just got to aim head height. when Protea Prime is supposed to be coming out. I think she's the next one to come out. I just don't know when. But I am excited. I like Protea. I want to build her better. I'll probably um, build her out a bit better than this one because I'm not super happy with this one for Endurance. This one is okay in Starter Steel Path, but as, you, as you've seen, like it, it can still die to stupid things. This is the Necros. 
but it's not very good in endurance steel path. Like anything that's like half an hour to an hour plus, she's really starting to hurt. Probably like an hour plus, she's really starting to hurt. And I like to do, I like to set up for like one to, like one to four hour survivals. So her kind of being weak at an hour in is not really good enough for me. Alright, let's get these Thraxes. Let us try not to die on these Thraxes. Oh, it's a one-shot right there. He's still up. i got to finish him off. Where is he? There he is. Oh, he was one-shot too. Okay, nice, nice, nice. I got lucky on those two shots. Alrighty, so we're at 10 minutes. We'll head over to Extraction next. What are we at? 775 kills. That's very good. That is... Uh, Almost the same as the uh, Kubis rival. You expect to get a little bit less in uh, Lua just because you spend more time fighting Thraxes. Um, but it didn't get that much less. Only got like 25 kills less. So it did very good. It's an extremely powerful incarnate weapon. It just does It does have that like weird, unfortunate thing that it kind of forces you... It If you want to use this to its full potential, it forces you into certain play styles. You have to play an overshield frame or you have to play a frame that could spread electric or use a primer like maybe the Hound. The Hound spreads a shitload of statuses but because he's not a sentinel he kind of is allowed to do his own thing and so sometimes he shoots in weird ass places that you're not a, uh, you don't actually want him to uh, throw his little synergized prospectus down. He'll throw it down a hallway that you don't even intend to go down. So I think maybe the most consistent way is just to use a frame that can... Uh, apply those electrics. Dirige is a pretty uh, consistent primer as well, but she's a very close range primer. This is a close range weapon, but it, can, I mean, it has a little bit of range. I think this shoots out farther than the Dirige can prime is the thing. So, okay. Um, Furious. It is a automatic pistol. I'm going to go over the build one more time for the second talk through. So the incarnate form is going to have innate heat and for mods, we're going to be going with Galvanized Diffusion for multi-shot. Galvanized Crosshairs for crit chance. And um, with this at full stacks, you are at almost full orange crits. You'll still see a few yellows here and there. But without Galvanized Crosshairs, you're in um, mostly yellows with some whites. And the problem with that is that all those white numbers you see are not getting the full effect of like Prime Target Cracker, uh, other crit damage sources... And so by, by ensuring everything is a critical uh, and also incre increasing your crit tier to oranges mostly, um, you'll get a lot more out of Galvanized Crosshairs. And it's very easy to maintain uh, headshots with this too. So Prime Pistol Gambit for crit chance. Prime Target Cracker for crit damage. Lethal Torrent for fire rate multi-shot. And then our three elements, we're going to be going for Pistol Pestilence and Frostbite to make Viral. And Prime T to Charge for Heat. Now, we're using Prime T to Charge just because it increases our heat weighting by quite a bit. So our heat's about two, a little bit more than two times the amount of Viral that we're getting. Uh, which is important just because Viral only stacks to 10 and Heat stacks to wherever you can get it to. <laughs> uh, now, again, if you're doing um, Whispers content, Viral is a bad stat on Whispers. On Whispers, you're going to want to use Corrosive. So... Uh, corrosive is the best general element against whispers. Again, like I don't want to harp on it too much, but the whole like uh, faction mod thing. Faction mods are very good. Heat stacks, double dip on them. Yes, it's very strong. But to do a build video with faction mods, um, you would also have to take into account faction uh, res resistances and weaknesses. And it would it would be five different builds for for every weapon um, between Grenier. Corpus, Infested, Corrupted, and Murmur. So, um, but for Whispers content, since it is a big part of the game now, uh, I do usually include that in my videos. Like me just saying, hey, take your Viral off and put Corrosive on instead for Whispers. Um, 
Radiation is the best against Murmur enemies, which are in Whispers. But against the Constructs, Corrosive is the best. And if you look at their weaknesses uh, or their resistances to both Radiation and Corrosive, uh, Corrosive ends up being a little bit better against both of them. So since Corrosive is the best against Constructs, and it has the, the, the most effect on the Murmur also, that's why Corrosive is the best general element on Whispers content. And if you were doing something specific, like if you were doing the Steel Path 60 Eyes boss, who is a literal Murmur enemy, then you wouldn't use Corrosive. You'd obviously use Radiation, because that's what Murmur are weak to. Uh, but generally, on Whispers, it's going to be Corrosive. So Lethal Momentum is going to be for projectile speed, because the Incarnate form kind of has fall off like a shotgun does. And so any kind of projectile speed is going to increase that out. It helps. And Cascadia Flare, we're going to be using it for the Arcane, because uh, Cascadia Flare is amazing. It does kind of require your weapon to be able to pump out heat procs, but the Furus is the heat pumper outer of the entire game, so you are perfect there. Uh, and then just to quickly go over that Utility Heal, um, this, this is a setup for uh, a Warframe or a setup that you have that is using another weapon as its primary damage source. So maybe you have a primary that is your primary damage source, or a melee that's your primary damage source, or maybe you're using a Warframe that kills everything. Um, you would use this utility secondary, Furious, as your healer. So, you know, something happens, you take a big, you know, hit of damage, you need to heal up, switch to your secondary, get a couple shots, bam, you're, you're healed up, and you go back to your primary or your melee, or your Warframe abilities, whatever you're doing. Um, the Utility Heal is going to do a little bit less damage than the, the Furious Main. It's still going to do an absolute metric butt-ton of damage. <laughs> so a lot of my Utility builds are kind of like Z DPS, like 0 DPS, and you get like all deep, uh, the Utility out of it. This one is definitely not Z DPS. This, this will still do a shitload of damage, um, but you're not intending to use it for the damage, because if you were intending to use it for the damage, you would use this build. So the only difference on the Utility build, if you like kind of look at them both, is these two slots. We've taken out Viral, and we've put in Winds of Purity to actually give us the lifesteal. That's the whole point of, of the utility build, is the Winds of Purity mod that you get from uh, New Loka. And then we've put um, Hornet Strike here. So, just for flat damage. So, more damage equals more uh, lifesteal. So, that's why. Okay, but yeah, this video, the, the gameplay was on the Furious main. This is the actual damage Furious right here. We're going to go over the elements, uh, not the elements, the uh, evolutions one more time. Um, first slot, of course, is nothing. You've just unlocked the Incarnate. Congratulations. Second slot is going to be the one that is probably the most, has the most impact. So the Furious kind of forces you to play in a specific way. And both of these are good. Haven for A is amazing. Stormburst is amazing. It's going to be dependent on, on what you're doing. So... Haven for A is what I used for this uh, video. They both are going to give plus 28 base damage. So this is plus 28 base damage. This is plus 28 base damage. It's what the extra effect is that, that are, that's different. So Haven for A is when you have overshields, you get plus 30 base damage. Now, base damage is amazing. Base damage is basically what everything else scales off of. And so that plus 30 is actually huge. But you have to have overshields. And so like this is really good if you're playing a Hildren, Shield Harrow, Shield Protea, although I don't think Shield Protea is that strong. I'm not super happy with my Shield Protea build. Um, but any kind of heavy overshield Warframe, this will be really, really strong on. And we get to this one here, Storm Burst. Really strong, 120% multi-shot. I'll take that all day long. But those stacks fall off after two seconds. So you have to consistently be hitting things with uh, electricity statuses on them. And so... You have to have a way to quickly and consistently put electric. You can use... There, there's no great way to, to um, put electric on this weapon. Uh, I wonder if you used Volts, uh, Subsume, and put Shock Trooper Augment on, if it would produce electric. I don't think it would mix with uh, anything. I think it would just give you pure electric. Maybe that would be a way. But, but again, that's like a very niche thing. That's a niche way of of being able to produce uh, electric well. And I don't even know if that would work, to be honest. 
Um, maybe use a primer pet like Dirigia or the Hound. Maybe you have a Warframe that's producing electric uh, procs. So this would be really strong in that case. But it, it's kind of, it's the same thing where they kind of force you into play, uh, certain play styles. So the Furious Incarnate is not for everyone because of that. All right, we'll go to the third evolution here. Um, these are all not going to affect the Incarnate mode, so accuracy by plus 50. Uh, that might actually technically affect the Incarnate mode, but the Incarnate is pinpoint accurate anyway, so it doesn't, it doesn't affect it much if it even affects it. So, yeah, so that's that. The Magazine Capacity by plus 25, that's what we're going to use. And then the on headshot plus 10% chance for an instant reload. Not going to use that one. So the reason we're using the plus 25 is because you get a... Uh... Hey, Worms! Thanks for following. Worms the Hermit just followed. The reason we're using the, the plus 25 extended volley is just so we can be big idiots and spam our uh, magazine into, into the enemies and through pure attrition fill our incarnate bar. Uh, that's pretty much why. We don't have to really be that careful with our shots. We have so many bullets that we can just throw them into the enemies and we'll fill our, fill our incarnate bar. So that's why we go with extended volley. And then in the very last slot here, um, there are three options. There are two okay options and there's one kind of meh option here. So on headshot, you get plus five fire rate for two seconds, stacks 10 times, so 50 fire rate. I don't like that. I don't like um, inconsistent fire rate on my weapon. I don't like my weapon to feel like it's like getting slower, getting quicker, getting slower, getting quicker. Um, so I don't like Headcracker because of that. The weapon also shoots ridiculously fast on its own. I know we have Lethal Torrent, but we're, we're using that a lot because of the multi-shot too. But like the weapon is really quick on its own, so Headcracker is not really needed. Prelude of Might is amazing, but it drastically uh, switches your build up. I know we have Galvanized uh, Scope. Um, I know it's called something else for secondaries. I'm just going to keep calling it Galvanized Scope. But I know we have Galvanized Scope on our uh, build, but even without Galvanized Scope, even with just the regular uh, crit mod, you're still above a 40% crit. So to use Prelude of Might, you pretty much have to build your Furious as like a status weapon. And so it, it drastically changes the build. I don't think it's going to be as good that way. Elemental Balance is a pretty easy choice. It doesn't make you change your build. It increases your status by plus 28 additively. It's not multiplicatively, so additively. And um, and in that case, it's actually good. Uh, and that's it. You're going to get more heat procs out of it. Simple as that. Not going to make you change your build crazy. You're going to get more heat procs, uh, quicker ways to get up to 10 viral stacks. Simple. So that's why we choose Elemental Balance. And that is the Furious Incarnate build. It's a pretty strong weapon. It does have those, those evolutions, unfortunately, that make you play certain play styles. Um, but if you play those play styles, this could be the weapon for you. So That's about it. If you liked the video, give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good day.